I wanted to take a few minutes to respond to a post comment that was made uh, on the channel wall a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I've been thinking about it. So I didn't do anything with it, didn't delete anything. I just, you know, had killed it there so that every time I logged on to approve comments, I could read it again. But now I'm finally ready to speak my piece on this on this issue and respond to this channel visitor's statement. She asked, is there any way that you and others can do a town hall that we can all come together as one or at least have the discussion that both sides can be heard? Others such as blank and blank. And, you know, she named some pretty good big names in um, on YouTube that are male, etc. Because this whole toxic masculinity thing must stop. So this is my response. Um, there probably would be a way that, that others can do that, but Deborah will not participate. Let me tell you why. I'm not going to waste my time. To me, this is the kind of thing that men should be getting together to do. They did that million man march. What Most of them just went out there for the party. But, you know, they came back and were all enthused for about a month. And then everybody went right back to doing whatever it was they were doing before they got on those buses, trains, and planes. I have not seen where there is a large-scale interest by black men in improving anything, not even themselves. Now, notice I said large-scale. There's individual guys from individual families who have different morals and values, and they are doing what they need to do in their small communities or in their families, you know, their immediate families or their, their, you know, greater families to make sure that the young men in their sphere don't have those crazy attitudes. But those guys are rare. The very nature of being a black male in the United States, there's a certain culture associated with that, a certain belief system about women, about religion, about their sense of entitlement to certain things from women and the the negative nastiness about quote females it permeates the entire society do you think that one person or even a small group of people have that kind of influence to change the minds and behaviors of millions of males we do not the only people who have that power are the men themselves the only ones who can get them together and get them, get them straightened out are other men. The fathers of these young boys, the uncles of these young boys, the grandfathers of these young boys, the cousins, adult cousins of these young boys, and the stepfathers of these young boys, the mama's boyfriends who are over these young boys. Those are the people who are responsible for this. It's not us. It's not us as a women, as women. There's no what what do you want us to say that we haven't already said? You said that both both sides can be heard. What's there to hear? I'm curious about that. I just I that's why I st it kept on my wall for so long to think about it. We've already expressed that. Women by the millions have expressed their dismay at the way men talk to them, street harass them, beat on them, stalk them call them names molest them we've done all that okay we've done all that if they really wanted to hear don't you think they would have listened by now it's not like this conversation just started last week these things have been going on for decades so there's no reason for me to waste my time getting together with black men to do anything i don't waste my time now, if one writes me an advice letter and he, that individual, seeks my counsel on a situation, I will respond to it. But I'm never going to put myself in a position 
where I'm out on Front Street trying to save black men from themselves. That's their job to do. That's their job to do because they made these boys. And then if you're a, a father and you're not involved in your son's life in some positive way to teach him something, well, then that's still you, you got double fault there. You made him and then you left him. So, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing when there's no positive male role model in young man's life, he is going to seek out someone to model himself after. It can be someone on TV. It can be someone on a rap video. It can just be, you know, some neighbor. It can be his coach. I mean, it can be, it can be someone positive. But what I'm telling you as women is men are different than us. We can be very independent. They all, men are more followers than women are. And they, that's why they do so well in gangs and, and packs and the army and the Navy and Marines and all of that. Men do really well in that because they like being told what to do. That's why when they get married, they still look for their wives to tell them what to do. Men will do what, they, what you tell them to do as long as that's what they want. So it's not really... You know, so if you have like a lot of guys telling each other what to do and it's positive and enriching and it's uplifting and it's, you know, it's something that they should be hearing, then these kids would listen. But that's not what's happening. These kids, you have like zillions and I'm, I'm being facetious, but, you know, there's just seriously millions of men that are teaching young boys how to be stupid. They teach them, like if you have a young man, I remember this from an advice uh, letter some time ago, the young kid, the aunt of the young boy was talking about how some of the uncles were trying to pressure him to cheat on his girlfriend. He's like 16, 17 years old. He was been, has been with this little girl for a couple of years, loves her to death. And that's who, you know, he didn't want to, you didn't want to cheat and hurt her. The uncles were trying to promote that to him, telling him he was a wimp and a simp and all this kind of stuff for not cheating on his girlfriend, for not breaking her heart, for being an upstanding young man like his parents raised him to be. But he has in his ear uncles that were t telling him you know, to do negative, nasty things. This is what we're up against. So even if you as a mom really you know, teach your son the, the right and proper way to be, you have to run interference from those outside people who are going to be trying to get in his head. You have to always be aware of what's going on around you and the kind of people that your child are, is around. So with, with that in mind, you know, you see, we can talk about it. We as women can do what we're supposed to do as parents. We can do all that. Can we stop men from having a negative influence on our boys? No, we cannot. The only thing that we can do is teach them to the best of our ability how to be upstanding, you know, upright and solid men that we all can be proud of. And then you got to let them go. You got to let them go. So thinking that in a position, you know, me in my position, certainly I have, you know, a platform and a voice and I can, you know, talk to people. But these guys have way more followers than me. And it's, you know, subscribers or whatever you want to call them. So if anyone was going to, you know, take the lead on this and try to do what they could as men, as black men, to change things with the men, the young men below them in age, the young men that are still in high school and middle school and headed off to college. I mean, they have the platform to reach these guys. At least I think they do, but... From what I've heard, most of them have women followers. And so that puts us right back at square one. If they have women followers and I have women followers, then who's going to be listening to this discussion about uh, toxic masculinity? It needs to be some guy, someone who has a lot of male followers. That's not me. I don't know who that person is, but that would be the person who would need to take this on. So, in essence, I just wanted to let this um, this commenter, you know, know and understand my thinking on this. I'm not going to do anything that helps men. I'm just not. Unless they write me individually, like I said, then I'll do that. But I refuse to take on the load of trying to help men on a large scale do anything. Help men on a small scale do anything. I'm not going to do it. And I would, you know, why should I? How's that going to help me? How's that helping you? You know, these are men who are already grown. What, 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 what do you think that we can do and say to them that they haven't already seen and heard? 
They are choosing to be toxic. They want to be this way. That's why they haven't changed. So I, you know, I just want you ladies to understand this. You know, these guys have total free will here. They could change at any time. I, me sitting around and running my mouth in some kind of town hall meeting with other people be running their mouths. They, they, had, they had opportunities to do this long ago. They haven't done anything. My, I'm here for women. I'm here for young girls to make sure that they recognize these kind of guys and don't get involved with them. If they get involved with them, how to get themselves out of it. If they got a guy who's only a little bit indoctrinated in this nonsense, how to have conversations with him and, you know, and, and switch things around. You know, his mo that he has to be motivated to want to change, though. You can't do it. But if you guys have a conversation and he sees the error of his ways and he's willing to change, well, then, you you know, that probably will be a good relationship because he's going to put forth that effort voluntarily to make himself be a different fella and be more family oriented and the guy that you need and all that. But in general, I'm telling you this. There's no there's nothing here for me. There's nothing. No benefit for me to sit around with a bunch of other guys on YouTube and talk about toxic masculinity. It's just no point. If you know, I would suggest though that you approach these guys about that and uh, see what they say and see how willing they are to do that. And my bet is they're going to decline because they already know men don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to other men. And so you know they definitely don't listen to women because we've been trying to teach them and tell them stuff for, I don't know, centuries, seems like. I um, So that's all I wanted to say on that. Uh, you can put your comments below. So tell me your thoughts on, on what I just said. I mean, is that something that you think that would be beneficial? I was going to have a town hall for women to talk about women's issues, but talking about, you know, men and toxic masculinity and how we could turn that around was definitely not going to be on my agenda. But let me know your thoughts. This is Deb Cooper signing out.